The following talk and PowerPoint presentation by David Furlong, entitled Illuminating the Shadow, was recorded at the 2016 Convention of the International Metaphysical Ministry in conjunction with the University of Sedona. The convention was held at the beautiful Poco Diablo Resort in Sedona, Arizona, USA. Our next speaker is Dr. David Furlong. David grew up in a Christian science family that practiced spiritual healing and discovered as a young child how to access his healing skills. He has been a practicing healer for more than 45 years. He began his esoteric training in 1968, and over the next 10 years, he developed his intuitive skills going on to establish his own inner plane connections. Since then, he has worked extensively in helping people to unlock their intuitive and healing gifts. He has a wide-ranging knowledge of earth energies and landscape healing work, including dealing with disturbed site energies. He is one of the founder tutors of the College of Healing and was the first chairman of the National Health Network. He is the author of seven books, including The Healer Within, Working with Earth Energies, and healing your ancestral, pat ancestral patterns. His latest book, Illuminating the Shadow, Transmuting the Dark Side of the Psyche, was published in March last year. He has appeared on television and radio, lectures widely both in the UK and abroad, and runs workshops and training courses. With a particular interest in mental health and spirit attachment issues, he became chairman of the Education Committee of the Spirit Release Foundation in 2002 and helped develop its educational training programs. When the foundation closed down, he established a new organization called the Spirit Release Forum, which he now runs as director. He holds a doctoral degree with the University of Sedona for his dissertation on the shadow. His talk today is based on his book, Illuminating the Shadow. Please welcome Dr. David Furlong. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a real delight for me to be here back in Sedona again. It's the third visit I have had, and also I'm deeply honored to be able to speak at this uh, convention. Uh, I thought it very interesting to on the fact that we are actually finding ourselves in a resort called Poco uh, Diablo. <laughs> yes. And I, with deep gratitude, <laughs> deep gratitude that it wasn't a great big devil. Um, I'm sure all of you, without exception, are light workers, but I wonder how many of you consider yourself as shadow workers. Any of you like to put your hands up? One or two? Well, I hope by the end of this talk, all of you will think uh, and be aware of the, what the shadow is and that indeed it's a very important for all of us. Uh, one of the things to recognize, of course, as soon as you stand in the light, you cast a shadow. And we need to be aware of that shadow uh, and if we're not, then it can come up and start to cause issues and problems for us. And I thought maybe to start with, I would just do a very quick, short uh, meditative exercise to give you a sense of what I'm talking about. Let's see how this goes. So if you'd like to just close your eyes for a moment. And I'd like you to imagine you're stepping into a beautiful place in nature. Just be aware of that place. Look around. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? And then in that place, turn and face the sun. Feel the sun shining on you. Imagine you're drawing in all of that wonderful sunlight. And now in thanking the sun, connecting to the sun, Turn with your back to the sun and feel the warmth of the sun behind you, supporting you. And stretching out before you now, you will see your shadow. So let us ask through that higher part of yourself, your higher wise part, for some aspect of your shadow 
just to present itself to you. You may be aware of just a feeling, you may be aware of an image, whatever it is, just acknowledge it, connect to it, and send it a thought of love and forgiveness. Maybe this is something you will need to work on further. And then, having acknowledged the shadow, turn around and face the sun again. And imagine you're drawing all of that light inside of you. But before you finish, just imagine in front of your eyes there's a pair of scales. And ask to that higher wise part of you, are my energies balanced? And see what happens to the scales. And if they're not balanced, just ask that higher wise or part of you, the God part of you, to help you balance those scales. And then, in thanking all of that higher wise part of you, gently bring yourself back to full waking consciousness. Well, I hope with that little exercise, it gives you a sense of how you can begin to connect in to this shadow part of yourself. Uh, now, a very famous individual, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, he made a comment which goes, the beginnings and end of shadow lie between light and darkness and may be infinitely diminished and infinitely increased. Shadow is the means by which bodies display their form. The form of bodies could not be understood in detail but for shadow. And indeed, all we would see without shadow is just blankness. So we need to be aware that the shadow provides depth and meaning. And I think this is a fundamental part of the universe. We need to understand the shadow. One of the uh, first people who introduced the shadow from the point of view uh, of a concept was Carl Jung. And for him, the shadow represented all of the repressed negative aspects of the psyche. All of us, without exception, uh, would have had traumas in our lives. And sometimes what happens is these traumas get buried, suppressed, but if we don't deal with them, they come out and begin to infect us in different ways. The, the, the traumatized child part of me can come up if I haven't sorted it out and start to influence things which are going on in my life. So I need to be conscious of how I heal those negative parts of oneself. But the other interesting thing is, from my perspective, we all have a positive shadow, not just uh, the negative parts. And the positive shadow represents all of our potential. And this has been talked about over this conference so far. So at any moment, as soon as you achieve that potential, you recognize there's a greater potential to be achieved. So your positive shadow is endless. And who knows where it might lead? Suddenly, <laughs> you can be out, or even better, you can suddenly begin to balance all sorts of parts of yourself. And when you begin to think about it from this perspective, the positive shadow actually is a fundamental within the universe. Because if we take it on the concept that we are all God experiencing, every moment of our experiences adds to the greater consciousness of the universe, does it not? Yes. So the universe, from that perspective, must also have a shadow. And we are all the time creating greater and greater potentials within ourselves and within the life that we lead. So, Again, I do not see God as a static force. I see God as a completely dynamic, creative energy that stands behind the universe in all its multiple forms. As was said, uh, I, did, I grew up as a Christian scientist and I believed implicitly as a very young age that there was a father, mother, God, a part of me that existed within. I've slightly amended that concept now because I believe that the, the divine creates spirit consciousness in all forms, not just human beings, insects, microbes, all of those parts, and imbues that thought with free will to experience. And through that free will, we uh, can go on adding to the consciousness of the universe. So, 
Um, one of the important things is our spirit, predominantly from my understanding, is actually in the spirit world. Part of that spirit, a small part of that spirit, enters into our physical body and is the soul essence within us. So one of the things which is very important for me is how do I communicate with my spirit, which is in the spirit world, to be able to get the insights and understanding of what it was that it wanted me to achieve in my particular life. Because I believe we choose our lives. And if you had a difficult upbringing, that's because your spirit wanted you to go through that experience. Now, of course, uh, one of the difficult things is there is also a malign shadow. And we only have to look around the world to see this happen. Uh, it's when we allow uh, qualities of fear, greed, those sorts of things to begin to dominate uh, the psyche. Uh, and sad to relate also, uh, there are sometimes spirits that choose to not want to accept uh, God energy, divine energy, and they then have to set up all the opposite for them. And one of the areas that I have to work is trying to help individuals who feel that they have uh, malign spirits which have attached to them. But one of the things I think we could be aware of is probably many individuals who got caught into prisons probably have other spirits attached to them that are causing them to act in malign ways. So, one of the things we can be aware is that there is a polarity which is operating on this planet. On the one side, we have all the energy that comes from the light, which is based upon love, compassion, and forgiveness. Forgiveness is hugely important. And it always seeks to balance and unite opposites. So, someone was talking about walking in another person's shoes. We need to learn to communicate with those that we do not see as our friends, but how can we begin to bridge across to them, to communicate with them, to work with them? Whereas on the other hand, the malign shadow works through fear, hatred, and revenge, and always wishes to try to split. So it's them and us. We're the good guys, someone has to be the bad guy. We're the saved people, someone else has to be not saved, and starts to create these splits. So the challenge for us all the time, and this occurs not only within ourselves as individuals, but within groups, is how do we unite and work through some of these splits? And it's very easy. And when you apply this test right across the board, you see how much, unfortunately, this malign shadow operates. It introduces fear. So always look at any, if it's a group, governments, whatever, what's the fear that's being introduced? Be mindful of fear. Secondly, control. You can think this, but you can't think that. It's all an aspect of that malign shadow. And the third thing, which stands out is the inflation of the ego. I'm somehow better than you. I'm greater than you. I'm the saved individual. So someone else has to be not saved. And you create the splits. And these are the things which we need to begin to unite, not only in the world as a whole, but also within ourselves. And I sometimes say, on the one side of me stands a Christ figure, and on the other side of me stands a Hitler. And if I reject that Hitler part, who carries it for me? So the challenge for me is to learn to love all of that part of me which has the potential for acting in a malign way so I can begin to learn to communicate with and love the terrorists, the, the bombers, all of these individuals. How do we balance that inside of our psyche? So, we can say um, there's three types of shadow. There's the positive shadow, which is, is fundamental to the universe and flows through all things. We also have a negative shadow. And this is the challenge for us to begin to look at those parts of us who are carrying wounds from only not only this life, but from previous lives. And we need to communicate with those parts. And sometimes those parts are going to throw up some very difficult energies but we need to learn to love and accept them. 
and forgive them. And they are the really important parts. Now, the other interesting thing about the shadow, it's not just operating within me, it operates within groups. All groups. This group has a shadow. Now, hopefully, the shadow is going to be predominantly a positive shadow because we're going to be looking to grow as an organisation. But we need to grow uh, without necessary restrictions that free thought can come forward. Inspiration at its highest level can come forward. But there may also be negative aspects there, which we need to look at and be aware of. So you can look at groups, how groups set up and establish themselves, and whether that uh, negative shadow comes forward. Uh, religions, you can see the shadow operating in there. Unfortunately, it's quite prevalent in the world at this moment in time. Governments, businesses, countries, we all, they all have shadow parts. And it's very easy in organisations to project out the not okay bits on this. Um, you know, at the moment there's a split going on between Russia uh, and the West. And that creates potential problems. Instead of trying to unite, there's a tendency to want to split. Now another fundamental part of all of this is understanding polarities. Because from my perspective, polarities run through everything. As soon as I put myself in one position, the opposite is part of me. As long as I can acknowledge that opposite, it's not a problem. But if I reject it, then it becomes an issue. Because if I reject it, someone close to me is going to start to carry it for me. So if I say I'm, a, I'm an honest, upright, truthful person, somewhere inside of me there is also the liar or the potential for that. As long as I accept it, not a problem. If I deny it, someone out there will be deceitful back towards me. So we need to be mindful of that, those splits. And the other side of it, of course, is that if I say I'm no good at something, I can't do this, or this is a real problem, the opposite of that is also part of it. So you can do it. You can sort it out. It may take a time, but you can achieve it. The Buddha talked about uh, walking the noble middle path. And the noble middle path means we need to acknowledge the opposites on either side of itself. I have to go if I'm walking from polarity to polarity. This is part of the journey that we need to take. But we need to try to take this in balance. And very quickly, also, I think uh, this is the hanged man from the tarot cards. You can see he's illuminated, but he's turning on its head. And one of the ways we can begin to understand how these things work is by keep turning it on their head. Whenever a statement is made, reverse it. Look at what's the opposite. When the gov a government official says, we're going to do this, what's the opposite? Because that may be where things are going to go. <laughs> yeah. Now... We also need to deal with paradox, and this was brought up uh, yesterday by Dean, and it's very interesting. I, I'll just put this through your thought. Here's a little uh, paradox. Does the Earth go around the Sun, or does the Sun go around the Earth? What's your immediate thought? You know, think about it. But actually, science tells us, of course, the Earth is going around the Sun. And yet, if we stand and watch the sunrise or the sunset, we experience the sun moving. So actually, paradox can be resolved by a question of perspective. Where do you see yourself? How do you perceive these opposites? Now also, science tells us that 95% of the universe is dark energy or dark matter. Fortunately, our shadow can be more easily determined. And it's determined by what's going on in your life. You only have to look at the things which are happening around you to see what's happening inside of you. So if you have a problem out there, it's because you've got a problem inside. Yes, that's right. That's right. And I would suggest to you the best way of dealing with it is to go within to sort out that inner problem. So don't deal with the outside so much. Deal with the inner world. Now one other thing which I think is really important uh, in all of this is to recognise that part of the shadow for most people on this planet, is their higher self. 
And the higher self, from my perspective, is our connection to our spirit. And we need to reinforce that connection to our spirit because our spirit has access to all the wisdom of the universe. And if we can build that connection up, we can get the guidance which is relevant and important to us. And that's the slight distinction I have from uh, implicitly believing that God sits within. But it, it's a question of how you interpret it. So my sense when I'm working uh, with my clients is to begin to think, how can I help them communicate with their higher wisdom? How can I help them? And it's amazing what comes forward when th that's uh, achieved. The, the higher wise part of you can bring forth all sorts of insights. Now, one of the difficulties is, as I said, when we hit trauma, we tend to split off a bit of ourselves to carry that trauma. These are like characters within, a whole group within. And, but your higher self, in fact, your higher self is all the time monitoring all that's going on for you now. It will not interfere unless you ask it. You need to ask it for help. And then it can help. Because free will is this uh, very important part. Now, your higher self knows which bits of you where the trauma exists, and it will do the work to actually help you identify it and then heal it. It won't uh, change those parts. You need to connect to them. You need to do the healing. And as you can see here in the work that I'm doing, uh, I sometimes have to involve not only dealing with the subpersonality parts of individuals, but also sometimes earth bound spirits, lost spirits, which will attach to people and get sometimes inside of them. They need to be all helped and healed and balanced. And we can do that with love and compassion. And even more difficult, sometimes you get dark entities getting inside of people because someone in the past life has been caught up in some form of uh, demonic activity. They take a lot of healing, but they can all be healed. So my plea to you all is be aware of the shadow, be aware of how you balance these opposites inside of yourself, and also to acknowledge and be aware of the connection to your higher self. So thank you. Illuminating the Shadow is packed full of useful information and exercises to help you access your higher self, to help you heal the wounded aspects of your psyche, and to fulfil your full potential. The first section of the book explores the representation of the shadow in books, films, myths and fairy tales. The second section explores the concept of the cosmic shadow, based on the evidence that consciousness exists independent of the physical body and challenges the broadly atheistic stance of science. It then explores the personal shadow before looking in depth at how the shadow manifests within the collective. The final section of the book, under the theme of transmuting the dark side of the psyche, contains a wealth of exercises and insights into the self-healing process. The book has been highly recommended by reviewers.